Hello, hello guys. So as you've noticed, I am putting out the astrological forecast for the remainder of July. And right now I'm separating it into fire sign, water sign, air sign, earth sign. I've done fire and water. I will get the air and earth sign out uh, no later than tomorrow, hopefully by today for you guys. Um, those are really fun for me to do. I very much enjoy them, so I hope you enjoy them as well. If you'd like a personal reading, you can check out my website. The website is listed below in the description box. You can also shoot me an email if you have any trouble with uh, purchasing the readings on the website. For some reason, um, there's been some issues that we're trying to work out with purchasing and making payments on the website, so you can just email me and we can collect payment that way, and we can get you scheduled in for your personal reading. It's a live reading, it's a phone call with me. They're anywhere from 60 to 75 minutes, and my most favorite is my North Node reading. Um, I've done though by far the most of those. I really enjoy those because it gives you a glimpse into your destined path, what you're supposed to be doing in this lifetime, what you're working towards, but also your gifts, your lessons, and any karma that you might be burning through or working through in this lifetime. And as I'm giving you guys this introduction, I'm looking out on a power line, uh, a street about one or two streets away, and I see these wild parrots that we have here. They're beautiful, and they are always together. They're always not even just in pairs, but they travel in groups. So I don't know what the significance of wild parrots is, but I would be interested to, to find out. So wild beautiful parrots that just fly and they always fly over the pool that I go to here and I mean those yesterday I think there was 20 or 25 of them just flying together in a flock so they're very social creatures they're very beautiful and I think that's a really good positive omen for us so what I'd like to do here is I would like to do a reading for the collective, I read for light workers, star seeds, twin souls, and anybody on the ascension or awakening path. I'm going to use the same cards that I'm using for the astrological readings today because these are the decks that I'm called to work with right now. So it's the Beyond Lemuria deck, it is the Muse Tarot, and the Angels and Ancestors. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing that I'm doing for the astrological readings. I'm going to pull only from the Major Arcana. I'm also going to pull cards from the other two decks. So, I think we're going to get started with the Angels and Ancestors deck here, okay? So we're going to start here, and then we will pull from the other decks as we continue. I hope everyone is doing really well. I know that the energies are very challenging. I'm going to be doing a Lionsgate report. I'll be doing a video and a Patreon post on the Lionsgate portal on 8-8. Um, by the end of the month is where I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to have that recorded and done for you guys. In addition, I will also be talking about the Mars Uranus North Node and Taurus conjunction. It's an exact conjunction on August 1st. So right before the Lion's Gate, we have this really powerful conjunction. So interested to dive into that and see what energies we can expect. Because I know it feels volatile. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Cleansing and clearing, right? Okay. So I know it feels volatile. I know it feels chaotic. And I know the energies feel very tense. A lot of you are experiencing that tenseness in personal relationships, people lashing out. Um, not the prettiest side of people. It's not the prettiest side of people that's coming out right now. So we want to take a look at ourselves. We want to take a look at how we're responding or reacting to life, to circumstances, situations, and to these people. But we also want to take a look at where we need to step back or step away from situations that are toxic, especially if um, there, you know, there's just negative energy that's circulating about. Um, there's no need to engage in that my friends so step back and really protect your energy at this time okay so let's take a look here angels and ancestors deck let's take a look here what is coming up for the collective here and let's get a card for the divine feminine i tend to read for the divine feminine divine masculine interesting some cards all right winter take care of your needs yeah exactly protect your energy so how are you maybe making yourself vulnerable you know, to attack? How are you not protecting your energy? Um, are you also engaging in the negativity? Are, are, you know, it's kind of like I was talking about, I think on the, I think it was the fire sign reading that I did this morning. 
Um, and you guys can have a listen to those, not just for your sun sign, but more importantly for your rising sign, for your moon sign, for your north node sign, even south node. Or if you want to read for your counterpart sign, if you want to listen for the counterpart, you can do that as well. Um, of course, you guys know I'm a big proponent of self-healing. I'm a big proponent of inner union, with, you know, coming into that inner union with your masculine and feminine, not so much focus on the external counterpart, but sometimes it's fun just to listen in to hear what they might be experiencing or going through, especially when you're like, wow, that's exactly what's happening. So it can just give you that sense of validation from time to time. Yeah, but how, how, are, how are you protecting your energy? How are you making yourself vulnerable? Um, where is it that you could be more authentic in what your needs are, expressing your needs? Um, and uh, there was something I was going to say, and I realized I just forgot. Something that I mentioned on the fire sign reading, and then I went on a tangent, so my apologies. Um, hopefully that'll come back to me here soon in a second. Um, yeah, but how, how might you be even resisting this, resisting taking care of yourself? Um, how might you, um, you know, maybe just be uh, kind of giving away your energy, you know, call your energy back, guys, call it back, especially after you've been in, you know, in contact with other people, especially calling your energy back when you're out in public, you know, especially when you're out at like places like bars and restaurants, et cetera, where there's just a ton of people or movies or things like that. Um, you know, uh, for me, it's like the pool, the community pool that I go to several times a week, just calling the energy back, protecting yourself, putting that shield around yourself energetically and do everything you need to be at your best. And also, you know, think about, you know, winter's a time of hibernation and retreat. So I know I've been saying this for a while that we're, we've been in this energy for the first six months of the year of hibernation and retreat. But for the second, you know, half of the year, I really feel like there's going to be more, um, there's going to be more action that's necessary. There's going to be the call to actually get out of bed and put your pants on. Like, damn, I have to put my pants on and get out there and do something. So the energy is absolutely shifting. And, you know, there's this like primal forth within you that, that wants you to continue, that wants you to, um, you know, continue on this path. And when you get to that place where you're like, okay, I've conserved enough energy, now it's time for me to come out of this cocoon, know that you are being guided to do so. Again, it's that primal force, like, you know, after winter, after hibernation, the animals come out in the spring and everything comes alive. And that's what I see happening here for, you know, a lot of you. And, um, you know, wolves can travel solo. Wolves can travel solo. They can travel in a pack. So you have the opportunity here to do some solo work. But also I'm seeing the need for people to really communicate with one another now. The need for people to find connection. You know, find connection in your neighborhood. Find connection in your community. Um, rather than just thinking you have to do this journey solo. Especially those of you on a twin flame journey. Because you feel like you can't communicate to friends or family and you feel like you're alone and it feels very challenging because um, especially some of you are isolated in certain areas and they tend to do that. We tend to be isolated in, in you know certain parts of the world and you can feel like there's no one to reach out to, there's no one to talk to. And you know I can't really tell people who I really am because they'll think I'm crazy, right? So, and this can be for anyone on the ascension path, just anyone who is awakening, who's, who's woken up to the truth and then surrounded maybe by people who aren't yet awake and surrounded by people who um, don't necessarily understand what's going on and can't necessarily, you know, provide that, um, just provide that comfort that you're looking for. All right, so let's get a, a taste here. The Magician card coming up. Yeah, you're capable of anything and everything. This is the card that comes after the Fool, before the High Priestess. So this is the card of using all the tools that you have acquired through all of your lifetimes and through this lifetime, your gifts and your talents, and through the resolution of karma, the dissolution and resolution of karma, what you have learned. This is the energy of you really tapping into those magical powers and knowing that you have everything that you need within you that you don't need to search outside of yourself. That's another theme coming up. You don't need to search outside of yourself externally for um, you know, the help, the healing, the guidance, that you are your own healer. You are your own guide. You are your own coach. You are your own, you know, you, you, you know yourself better than anybody. Um, and not, not to fear, um, you know, what I'm just hearing is not to fear that which 
um, you don't fully understand. I'm not sure why that's coming through, but it might be coming through for somebody in particular or for a small group of people, but connecting to all the four elements. And perhaps this is why I was called to do the astrological readings today, connecting to fire, water, air, and earth. Connecting to, you know, the fire realm is the spiritual realm, the water realm is the emotions, the air is your intellect, it's your, um, it's, it's your mind, right? Water is the heart, and then the earth sign, that's just connecting to Mother Nature, Mother Gaia, and earth, um, grounding yourself. So we have all these four elements coming in here and saying you can access the magic from all of these four elements, they're contained within you, and bring out those latent skills, bring out those dormant skills and abilities that you have. Use your creativity, use your intuition. Um, <clears throat> you know, step forth with good intentions. Um, be the alchemist, be the alchemist in your environment, be the alchemist in your life. Alchemize in diffuse situations, okay? That's something that um, Divine Feminine is being called to do right now, alchemizing situations by just showing, I mean, you can't control your surroundings, you can't control somebody else or what they choose to do or say. All you can do is control your response. So, you know, walk away from anything that is not bringing you peace. Walk away and create the peace within you so that you can move forward from a place of that inner union, that inner peace of knowing that, you know, especially, again, guys, if, if there are attacks coming towards you, um, because I've had a lot of people, a lot of clients report this in personal sessions this week, even some of my friends and family, um, <clears throat> just protect your energy and know that if somebody is projecting onto you that it's likely you know something that they're feeling about themselves that they haven't yet faced there's that shadow aspects coming up right now and um you know <clears throat> for all of us and it's not pretty and we don't like to face our shadow aspects but we need to in order to fully integrate the shadow and to fully heal so let's get a card now from the beyond lemuria deck and see Earth, nurture nature. I saw this card as I was shuffling earlier for one of the other readings, and I thought, hmm, I wonder if that'll come up today. And here it is. So <clears throat> we have the energy of, yeah, connecting to the earth element, grounding, getting yourself stabilized, um, creating the stability. Um, so check in with your root. Check in with how stable you feel. Most people don't feel very stable right now. Um, I've had a lot of clients report also that, you know, job loss, home relocation, you know, having to downsize, um, you know, things happening very quickly, things happening out of nowhere, out of the blue, um, and, and, you know, companies, you know, uh, are, are, it's fear mode, you know, it's fear mode. Um, the farms are, are having trouble, um, and this is all very real and this is part of that mars uranus northward conjunction in taurus it's happening in the earth realm it's happening in the 3d so as these things are happening it's bringing up a lot of chaos it's bringing up a lot of fear it's bringing up a lot of the unknown okay the unknown of the future of what's going to happen and this is why i feel like community and connection is so important right now this is why they're saying take care of your needs. You may need to be a solo wolf for a while, but also wolves, you know, yes, there's an alpha, but you know how to travel in a pack. Create your community, guys, wherever you are. I would urge you to create a sense of family and community so that you have people to rely on, so that you feel safe where you are, especially as we move into the winter. Um, in the winter is really when we could feel the potential effects of this conjunction, um, you know, collectively, globally, um, in the physical world where we could see the ramifications of, you know, with the food system and even more food shortages. And we could see, um, you know, supply chain issues, you know, all over again. And I'm saying this, you guys, you know, if you're new to my channel, I don't say it to scare you. I say it to empower you so that you can make the decision that you wish to make and take the action that you want to take moving forward, whatever that might be. Okay. Um, let's get a card here. I'm just having trouble kind of discerning what decks to use. It's kind of like all of them are calling to me at this time, which is usually not, not what happens at all. Okay, there we go. We're going to use the integration deck because I do feel like it's definitely, this could be assisting us. Powerful time, you know, to integrate energies here. So let's use the integration deck by the beautiful Diane Garris. 
you can find her shop over on Etsy. She has beautiful decks. The only Twin Flame decks that I use are by her because they are very authentic, they're descriptive, and they contain a very high vibration. She is a beautiful, healed, divine feminine. She is a beautiful creator. She's also a singer. You can purchase her CDs, I believe, on Etsy as well. Heart Chakra, Water Signs, you actually, if you guys want to watch the Water Sign reading that I did this morning, you will see that this was something that came up for my Water Sign, Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer out there. Have more compassion. Yeah, I mean, compassion for Earth, um, compassion for others, compassion for self, especially as people are, you know, lashing out. People, you know, if someone's lashing out, they're, they're, it's from a place of pain. It's from a place of insecurity and fear. We all do it. You know, we're all capable of coming from the ego. None of us are perfect. We're all on this path of ascension and we're all just human. You know, we agreed to be human, to come in and incarnate as a human. So even though we're a soul, we're human. Um, and then it's like, I can see this as, you know, don't misuse your power. Um, that could also be said for the wolf card because, you know, as an alpha, you know, you could be the alpha and it's easy to misuse power. So don't misuse your power, divine feminine, use it for the highest and greatest good. Um, and this is that sacral chakra though, the, the, the womb of creativity, the womb of creation itself. So, you know, there's a lot of power in the sacral chakra for both a man and a woman and um, masculine and feminine but just make sure that the power is coming from a compassionate place because your soul could be divine power okay your soul could be you know represent divine power but you could misuse that you could abuse that um and you could act out let's say like narcissistically um and you know you um one of my exes had a divine power blueprint you know for his soul but he chose to use it um, in the past, I can't speak for the present, but he chose to use it in the past um, in a narcissistic manner. And um, notice how I say narcissistic manner and I'm not labeling him a narcissist because now I have the understanding that narcissism um, is, is a label, but it comes from trauma, okay? And so I don't really partake in labels. I really try to avoid them. I try not to use them. Sometimes I catch myself doing it because I'm human, but I really try to avoid um, even, you know, the twin flame label, I may call, you'll hear me, you'll hear me say counterpart or divine you know, counterpart or partner or something. But I, I rarely, um, will I say, you know, twin flame, except maybe just on a label for a video. So people know what it's about because YouTube requires that for its algorithms and whatnot. But yeah, you've hear you've heard me really come away from the labels as I'm sure many of you have been called to do as well. And it's like, who am I to, you know, to discern? Who am I to have the power to label somebody else as a narcissist or, or, or anything else, you know? Um, we don't have that power. We're not God. And so he acted in that way and he was abusing his beautiful, like amazing divine power soul. I mean, he, he could have, I mean, he had the potential to accomplish so much and to really, um, he had the potential to really harness, you know, um, like people and, and get people to move and to take action. He really did and still does. It's just a matter of what you choose to do with the gifts that you're given. So that would go back to the magician card as well is what are you, what are you doing with the gifts that you're given? You know, are you using them to, for the greater good or are you using them, you know, because, you know, to gain control and power. So interesting, just an example that I can think of, um, from my life that, um, I remember, you know, finding that out and I was like, wow, that, that makes a lot of sense actually. And it's really sad because somebody that has that much power could really, really do so much good in this world. So praying and hoping that, um, that is what's happening now with him. That is the case, um, for, you know, for the good of, um, his children, for the good of all, all women that come across this path and all people that come across this path. And, um, for the greater good of the world, you know, let's, let's heal. Like, let's believe that people can heal. Let's not believe that people have to be stuck just because he acted that way six years ago. Doesn't mean that's who he is today. So choose forgiveness guys. That's a form of compassion. Choose forgiveness when, when you can, you know, um, and if you can't, that's okay. But if you're able to take that route, so I'm going to go ahead and um, just leave you guys with this ni nice, short, concise reading. Again, if you'd like to book a personal session or a coaching session, if you're a twin flame and you feel lost on your journey, you can do that on the website. Take really good care, guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.